Hi, I'm Pete, and this is a brief tutorial on the last face of the Smaz Time Machine. Now, the Smaz Time Machine was uh, sold on the Twisty Puzzle Forum by Smaz. This is the Smaz Time Machine 2012, and since then it's become fairly widely available. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward puzzle for the most part, except that last face, which can be a bit of a challenge uh, to solve, particularly when you get the swap number parity. So I'm going to show you my method for uh, solving that uh, swap number parity, and I will also show you my method for uh, cycling the numbers on the last face, and then uh, uh, you will be able to solve this mass time machine uh, quite easily after that. Okay, well here's the... Smash time machine. It's solved. All of the numbers are uh, in order 1 to 12 on every face. And um, it, it's fine. I've double checked for that because you want to make sure. And all we're left with is just a few numbers on the last face. And that's pretty typical of uh, how things are going to go. Uh, solving all the other faces is usually pretty quick because you uh, can uh, move numbers and you can use other faces to uh, assemble it but on that last face you have to do everything on the the one layer now I'm ending on the uh, yellow here um, another good place to end would be the white because it's a very high contrast but I'm just kind of traditional so I'm just going to end uh, on the yellow face so what we have here is I have everything in order I have six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then I have a bit of a mess here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep recycling the uh, numbers uh, to to get as many of them in order as possible and then I'm going to find out whether or not I have to do a parity fix. Now the algorithm that I use is uh, one that uh, a person named uh, Conrad with a K uh, posted on the Twisty Puzzle Forum and it's really the reason I like it is it's very similar to a, an algorithm uh, that I use for cuboids to do corner swaps and I like this algorithm because the same one can be used for both uh, three cycling the numbers which I'm going to show you just now it can also be used with just one little change to solve the parity so I really like having just one algorithm to memorize so what I'm going to do now what the three cycle does that I'm going to show you is it moves these these numbers this number moves to here this number number moves to here and this number moves to here okay so it's a very nice compact three cycle and it's really straightforward it's, it should be relatively easy to remember um, and i'm going to put it on the screen as i do it okay so the five is going to move forward the two is going to move forward the three is going to move forward the nice thing about this is that we're kind of moving the five towards the six spot that's what we want to do okay so here we go so the algorithm is we're going to do all R2 turns. So we're going to do an R2, which flips the, uh, the puzzle over, okay, on the right-hand side. We're going to do U1, which means we're going to move the uh, top layer, the U, one clock uh, position. Okay, so that's U1. We're going to do our RW2 again. It's a wing turn of uh, flipping the puzzle on the right hand side then we're going to flip the puzzle over and we're going to do a d1 prime which is a counterclockwise turn of the d layer generally speaking you're going to you're going to have a the wrong color here and you'll be moving it back so that's how to uh, remember that uh, d1 uh, prime turn now we're going to turn it back and we're going to do um, another turn rw2 and now we're going to do u1 one position do it again and now we're going to do two in a row of uh, u1 prime u1 prime turn it again now this is a double it's u1 prime plus we're going to do a d1 so a clockwise turn of a d layer and again it will be very easy to figure out what you're supposed to do because you're setting things right here we're going to turn it back and we're going to do an rw2 again all right, and that was it for the whole thing. Now, that may seem pretty complicated, but once we start doing it fairly quickly, you'll see that it's uh, it's um, there's a pattern to it. So what did that do anyway? Well, all that really did for us is it moved, uh, moved the 5 up one spot, it moved the 2 up one spot, and it flipped the 3 back 
uh, to that position. So you see now that if I do that again, I'm going to move the 5 to the 2 spot, which will be great because it's going to be right beside the 6, and then we'll extend our uh, sequence of uh, numbers. So let me try that again. And I'll go through it just, to, just a little faster, but I'll still go through it step by step. So it's RW2, U1, RW2, D1 prime. So you see, we put this one back over here. RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime. RW2, U1 prime, and D1, and RW2. Okay, well, that's that's looking really promising because we have our 5 right there, 6, 7, 8, looking really good. Okay, now the next thing we got to do, I have is 4 out of place. That's the only thing that's really out of place here, right? So let me just turn this clock face and see what I can do. Well, what I really want is for the 4 to end up there. But I only have a 3 cycle. I can only 3 cycle these numbers. So let me try. Um, I'm going to maybe move it over to here. Okay, and then it'll be right beside and, and one more 3 cycle. We'll put it right beside the 5. So I'm going to go through the sequence again. Actually, this 4 is going to end up there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of thread the 4 along these numbers. Okay, should 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 work quite nicely for us. All right, here we go. So it's so the one's going to go here, the two's going to go there, and then the four is going to move one spot up. So it's R W two U one R W two D one prime R W two U one R W two uh, U1 prime, sorry about that. RW2, U1 prime, D1, RW2. Okay, all right, not so bad. Now, um, let's see, how am I going to do this? Uh, yeah, I can I can do this one more time, and it'll move the four just a little bit closer to where it needs to be. The other thing I could do, there is a two. You could use a two-step version of this, but uh, for now, I'm just going to uh, step one uh, number at a time. Okay, it's the easiest way to do it, most straightforward anyway. So, it's RW2, U1, RW2, D1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, Yeah. Okay, I got just got something just a little bit. Oh, it was the back. Sorry about that. RW2 um, U1 prime D1 and then RW2. So it's a little annoying when that happens, but really it was it that doesn't happen very often. I was just probably squeezing it too tight. So we're really close now. As a matter of fact, if I do one more three cycle with the four in that position, then it's going to get right beside the five. So let me just do that one more time. RW2, U1, RW2, D1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1 prime, D1, and RW2. Wow, this is this is fantastic. Look at that. Okay, so now I have four, five, and all the way up to twelve. And all I have to do is fix these uh, three numbers that are kind of discombobulated. Okay, so what I can do um, is I'm going to three cycle the three that'll go up to there, and then we'll see what we got. Okay, ready to go. All right, so it's RW2, U1, RW2, D1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1 prime, 
and D1 and RW2. Well, look at this. I got 3, 4, all the way up to 12. And now I just have two left to do. And here is the, the infamous switched number parity. The thing is that what I've shown you so far is a three cycle of numbers. And I have absolutely no way right now to just two cycle numbers. I just can't do it. Okay, So that's where a lot of people get stuck. And what tends to happen is that maybe they'll fool around with it a little bit, maybe they'll scramble a puzzle a little, a little bit, and then somehow magically it disappears, okay? And it disappears probably because you're accidentally applying the parity fix. The parity fix is really, really straightforward. What I'm going to do, if you'll notice that the top of this puzzle is divided into uh, four uh, quadrants, right? So what I'm going to do is just swap two quadrants and it will actually solve the parity for us. And then we can just uh, one, uh, three cycle everything back in. And that's really the entire fix. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you what this looks like on a, uh, on a two by two, because really it's the same sort of algorithm. Now, um, there are quite a few number of algorithms to swap uh, adjacent corners on a two by two, and that's basically what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna apply the algorithm. It's the same algorithm we've been doing, except instead of stepping by one uh, on each clock face, we're gonna step by an entire uh, quadrant, which is three numbers. So I'm gonna do it on the uh, two by two, the two layer puzzle, and you're gonna see it's gonna swap these. So it's RW2, um, U1, or U basically, RW2, D1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1 prime, and D1, and RW2. Now, the when you do it this way, you also have to do basically one more counterclockwise turn. Um, and notice that we've just swapped these two uh, corners on this puzzle. Otherwise, everything else remains the same. Okay, so we're going to do that same thing to our SMAS time machine. And what it's going to do is it's going to put the numbers, uh, the last face, into a solvable state for us. So the way I recommend you do this, it doesn't matter which two uh, quadrants you switch, but I recommend you pick the two that have the numbers that are swapped. And what I like to do is I'll just I'll um, turn it down so that the two numbers that are swapped are on that seam right there because I'm going to swap this quadrant and that quadrant. Okay, you don't have to do that. You can swap any two quadrants. It's just um, if you swap some that are already in a good sequence, uh, then it will uh, it'll just be more work solving, right? So by picking these two, the two that are swapped. Uh, that, I think, it gives you the least amount of work to do to solve it. All right, so I've got the two numbers that are swapped on the seam, and I'm going to apply the same algorithm we've been applying. However, instead of just moving one position each step, we're moving three positions. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're doing the parity fix. So we're going to do RW2. Okay, now we're going to do uh, U3, so this one is going to end up down here. Now we're going to do RW2. And now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do uh, U, uh, D, sorry, D3 uh, prime. So this piece is going to end up over here. We've gone backwards three steps. And we're going to do RW2. And now we're going to do a, a U3. So we're going to move that up there. We're going to do RW2, and we're going to do a U3 prime. So this one's going to go over here. We're going to do a, a W2. We'll do another U3 prime, and we also have to remember to do our D uh, D prime, D prime, D3 prime, or D3. Sorry, there you go, D3. And you can see that it's it's fixed it. And finally, we're going to do an RW2. And remember this one, just because it, it sort of um, twists everything, we got to go back uh, U3 prime. Okay, that's one little extra step. And now you've seen that we've swapped um, these 
these two groups of numbers, okay? All the rest of this, the other half of the numbers are still in perfect shape. And as a matter of fact, quite a few of the numbers are, are still in, in good order over here. So it's just a matter now of working our way through uh, three cycling our numbers. We'll go back to the way we were doing it before and we will eventually get everything in the right order, okay? So now we have three, four, five, six, and we're getting pretty close. We got 10 over here. So now it's just a, a, a pretty simple thing. As a matter of fact, if I cycle it so that that two is over there, um, then you know we're gonna, gonna get pretty close to everything being done. So um, I guess my next thing will be to, to cycle everything. Now that one's gonna go there, the two's gonna move up, et cetera, et cetera. And I think this, this looks very promising for us. Uh, to get this done in just a couple more. So I'm going to go back to single three cycles and uh, let's see how that goes. RW2, U1, RW2, uh, D1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1 prime and D1 and RW2. Okay, so yeah, definitely looking really promising here. So now the next time I do this, the two is going to be in position. Now the one's going to get knocked uh, down to here, but that's okay because I think we're going to have a good three, one more three cycle to fix it. Okay, but let's give it a try. RW2, U1, RW2. D1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1 prime, and D1, and RW2. All right, well that looks, that looks phenomenal, right? As a matter of fact, if I just turn this one step, if I three cycle this again, the one's going to be here, the eleven's going to be beside the ten, and then the twelve's going to be where the one is. I think we've got it. Let's try this. RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1, RW2, U1 prime, RW2, U1 prime, and D1, and RW2. And so what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All nicely in order. And now if we look around the puzzle, uh, we don't have any problems with any of the side faces. If you've been using another face, you might want to double check that everything is still in, in good uh, working order. Um, all of this is, is in good shape, so we have solved the smash time machine. So the bottom line is, if you get a swapped number parity on the last face, then all you do is you apply that nice uh, algorithm um, that I showed you with uh, moving three steps at a time to swap two adjacent uh, quadrants on your top face, ideally with the numbers that are still messed up, and then just a cycle groups of three numbers until everything's in place. All right, well, that's it for me for the uh, last face of the SMAZ Time Machine 2012. As always, uh, I appreciate your comments, your questions, your suggestions, so uh, leave me some feedback in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching.